Here's an update about Abby and her cubs. The cubs are a lot bigger now and still nurse from mom at five months old. They'll continue to nurse up until about eight months old. Cheetah cubs have temporary milk teeth, which helps them nurse. They lose these at about five months old and replace by permanent ones. But that doesn't stop them from eating meat and bone at about two and a half months old. Fast forward to five months old and look at them now. So it's uh, my first time feeding Kimmy since I've been back. Hey, you want to sit down, sweetie? Are we down, sweetie? Both she and her brother have been doing extremely well. Neither has been ill, but Kimmy did have a sore knee for a few weeks. It's all better now. Oh, look at how dirty too. Look how dirty you are. My goodness, you're dirty. It's uh, been heavily raining here. Hey, sweetie. Uh, Kimmy is uh, five months old now. Hey, go, sweetie. What I'm doing is I'm uh, doing some hand feeding like I do uh, Gabriel and even Abby to uh, familiarize them with uh, uh, kind of a gesture of good faith, right? So get them familiar with, you know, hand feeding. Like if you give them medicines, you want to make sure they take it. So that's what I've been doing. I watch my fingers do it too. So their jaws are already strong enough to uh, bite through a bone. Amazing. And it's good to let them chew on the bone and let them um, masticate it basically so they can swallow it properly. Yeah, Kimmy. There you go, sweetie. So it's just, uh, you know, she's, you see how, how quiet she is, pleasant, she's uh, not stressed at all. And it's good when you start, the young, start young like this and they, uh, they get very familiar. Oh, here, 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 sure. What do you want? You want to on the camera? Over here, Kimmy. Here, Kimmy, here's more. There's more right there. So we have zebra and chicken for her today. Come here, come here Kimmy. <laughs> come here. She wants to know what you want. What are you, what are you looking for? The cubs are a huge fan of chicken, but I'm not. Now, I prefer them eating game meat, but it's not always available. I was, uh, with Gabriel even, I, if he has trouble eating, if I hand feed like this, uh, you know, he generally has a 80% you know, chance more that he'll eat it, whatever it is I'm offering him, even if he doesn't like it. Look how dirty you are. You've been playing this morning in the mud. Is your brother, you playing with your brother? Go, sweetie. Ooh, it's delicious. This is a zebra rib. Here again, I'm demonstrating to Kimmy that I'm a provider rather than a competition. Ooh, a nice strong bite. The bones, tendons, sinew, and cartilage are very good for their nutrition, especially as they're developing. It's best to feed them at their personal designated spots to avoid chaos. Like her mom, Kimmy is highly possessive over her food. We failed here and look at Kimmy's reaction. No harm done. No harm done, but now you see why I want the cubs trusting everyone when it comes to feeding them. This possessive food behavior is natural in the animal kingdom. And sadly, in many cases, it's no different for us humans as well. When there's more to share, there's less possessive aggression. It's with the smaller bite-sized pieces where you get the overreaction. It's a large enough meal they can share and there's no conflicts. As an example, here's a zebra that was culled for their benefit. Yeah, not for the squeamish, but this is what cheetahs hunt and eat. Feeding time is mostly civil between Abby and her cubs. They share food often without conflict. I've asked the staff to give my cheetahs a variety of foods to sample. There are too many finicky eaters in captive cheetah projects, yeah, there we go. and this helps there defeat that. Go. Oh, I know it's a little cold, I'm sorry. No, he's, that's not good. He's not even eating fillets now. Boo, buddy. Hello. Hello, buddy. Good boy. Ooh, what do you think? Oh, I didn't like it. Nah. Here's some of the variety of foods Kimmy and Kaiser are being introduced to. This is a Thompson gazelle that was hunted for food. There you go. There's yours. So I got a zebra leg here to, to gnaw on. Oh, look at that. That's good. This is Kaiser showing mom what he's caught. Now 
Big hit for Kimmy and Kaiser. Even uh, Abby was in on it a little bit. We had to take it from her. Now it'll take Sissy to get two there. It's really good for them, good exercise um, for their teeth, jaws. And Abby's got one. <laughs> Cute. You like it, Abby? Just like with all cubs, food time and play time blend together. Zebra tails are a good introduction to taste, feel, scent, food, and play. Even Abby can be entertained by it. Not sure where this came from, but it's a deceased pigeon that didn't go to waste. Now, even dead mice don't go to waste. Yeah. One of the house cats caught a, uh, a mouse. Uh, Kimmy's, oh, she's already opened it up. Look at that. Cheetahs have an amazing repertoire of sounds they make. Listen to Kimmy, annoyed by her brother or mother, trying to share her mouse. So she's actually eating it. I thought she'd play with it, but no, she's eating the intestines of this mouse. Look at that. <laughs> See what I mean about sharing these smaller portions? It's not as likely because you personally own that. Sibling rivalry. We made sure Kaiser got a portion of the mouse too. So we had to take it away from uh, Kimmy. She, she had her share. Hey, did you like that, sweetie? You like that? Now after a shared meal, family bonds are reconnected with a proper facial grooming. And a few love bites. This is a cheetah breeding and rewilding project. To prepare them for their futures, we're going to train them how to hunt on their own. Part of that training is feeding them a variety of prey animals they may come across. Here, Kimmy surveys the grasslands of some wildebeest on a game reserve next door. The cubs are too young and inexperienced to tackle something so large, so they're being shooed away. Safety first, but when the day and time is right, they'll have their first hunt. Now I value life, and I don't lose perspective that these predators trade a life for a life. It's the reason I'm introducing the cubs to a variety of game diets. It helps reduce waste from finicky eaters and prepares them for the future in rewilding. In the interim, the cubs still enjoy the blessings from mother's milk.